Hey guys, this is Anil from bloggespassion.com. Today we have Craig Campbell who has a website at craigcampbellseo.com. He is based out in Glasgow, a popular city in UK. Uh, Craig has been in the SEO industry for the last 18 years. So it's like he's been into SEO domain. I would say at that time, lots of people may don't know even what is SEO actually. So that could be the case. Uh, Craig yeah. is doing lots of things. He is uh, working on his website. He's doing consulting. He has been speaker to lots of events. Uh, he has courses. He's doing webinars, podcasts. So he's doing lots of things. So in today's uh, interview, we'll try to learn a uh, lot about Craig as well as his journey in SEO and lots of questions around SEO. So Craig, uh, welcome to our YouTube channel. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for asking me along. Uh, it's a welcome. Craig, uh, can you share some detail about yourself, like how you started and how your SEO journey has been so far? Um, so I initially started out, as you say, um, when SEO wasn't really a thing. Um, I was messing about with websites and um, all of that type of thing. And I think this story is quite common. So I was messing about with websites, found out I was really bad at it. <laughs> but I was fortunate enough that SEO started to become a thing. Um, so yeah, I just learned on forums, you know, completely self-taught. And um, before I knew it, um, I started, so I was working in a company that had a website. And before I knew it, people were starting to ask me to do this SEO thing. And I eventually became, I had enough money that was, I was earning more from this SEO thing than I was in my day job. Um, so I thought, of, you know, to hell with the, the job, I'm going to do this thing. And uh, worked in my bedroom for <clears throat> four or five years, just learning and developing my skills. <clears throat> and SEO became more and more, uh, you know, more and more of a thing. And, uh, and then I started, I built up an agency. So I'd done agency life for probably seven or eight years of my life doing client work, um, hiring staff, uh, you know, and I didn't set out to do that. You know, I was working from my bedroom and then one day I thought, I need a sales guy and I need a, I need a content writer. I need a web developer. And before I knew it, I had the bloody agency. Um, and that wasn't something I had set out to do. Um, and agency life was okay, but I'm sure most people will be able to agree that working with clients and running an agency while trying to be an SEO is is not a good mix. It's very stressful. Um, so, you know, I'd never run a business before. Didn't really understand the business side of uh, things. You know, I'd hated accounting. I hated invoicing. Um, and it just, it, I found it quite stressful, to be honest. And I felt that Owning an agency, my SEO skills were slipping because I wasn't spending enough time being an SEO. So probably about five years ago, I decided to stop doing client work um, and decided that I need to do something that makes me money because clients can pay me a thousand or two thousand or five thousand dollars a month, and I can make them fifty or a hundred thousand pounds from that, um, depending on what we're doing. Um, and I thought. Why the hell would I do this for a client when I could do it for myself? Yeah. And something, you know, just as old age and experience starts to kick in, you're like, I've been a, a sucker. You know, I've been begging for my money from clients. So I decided to go down the route of um, promoting <coughs> me as a brand um, and doing courses, doing affiliate and making my own money. And I find that that is a lot less stressful. Now, of course, I've still got a team. I've got a videographer. You know, I've got people to help me with content. I've got people that do, you know, development and stuff. So my team of people, um, I've still got a team of five um, that help me do the day-to-day -day things. But I'm a lot less stressed. I don't have to beg clients for money. Um, and I've found how what what makes me happy so i've now got the ability if i want to take today off tomorrow off or i want to take a week off then i can do it because who who, who do i have to answer to now if i want my affiliate money my affiliate money mostly comes in twice a month there's never an argument you never have to chase up an invoice uh, nothing like that 
And best of all, I don't have to report to anyone. So I don't have to make all these. I don't need to spend 10 hours uh, trying to kid on to a client that, you know, I've done this, 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 and this for them. And we all know that reporting's a pain in the ass. So, yeah, I think I've, I've been able to find what I'm comfortable with um, over that period of time as well and, um, and, and found a nice work-life balance, if you like. Yeah, that's that's great. Basically, it's it's always a great. Basically, if you are on your boss, uh, if you're working for yourself, in that case, you can think of getting things, uh, even big things, in the long run. Basically, so yeah, working for others, it's always a great idea to work for yourself if you have some funds in place. Basically. I think there has to be a period though where you do have to do client work. You've got to use the client money to be able to invest into. To longer term, you know, whether that's affiliate or drop shipping or e-com or whatever you want to use that money for, you, you have to do it. It's part of your apprenticeship, if you like, um, being an SEO. You have to suffer some clients and some stress um, and then you can make decisions on, you know, how you move forward. So, yeah, that that's kind of my story in a, a nutshell. And um, There's been a lot of mistakes, a lot of pain a lot of stress um, along the way. So yeah, it's been fun though. Okay, so uh, coming to the first question. Uh, so Google uh, is taking lots of uh, factors into consideration when uh, it's ranking any website. So uh, according to you, uh, what are the top five rankings factors basically we people should actually work on the most? So you've got the, the old fashioned content, links, technical. Um, one that's working really well for me is click-through rate. So I believe that you know links and content and good technical will take you to page one. Um, but then in comes other factors such as time on website, click-through rate, engagement signals. Um, so I think you know that's that's something I'm working on a lot um, is the click-through rate and engagement type of things and and how do you manipulate that so. I have a process in place so that when I re release a blog post or an interesting video, I will send it out to my emailing list. I will send it out to my push notification subscribers. I will send it out to my Facebook group. I will send it out via a paid Facebook ad. I may also use Quora ads. And because of that sequence of events, any video <coughs> or any blog post that I release would appear to be viral. It gets serious engagement when it's launched. And that is what really makes that jump into the top end of the positions. Now, of course, it may never hit page one, position one all the time. But at that point, if it hits position three on page one, um, then I may build some links to it. I may add to the content, I may tweak something, you know, I might add more internal links. Um, you know, I may do a second round of click-through rate manipulation and I may go and use some micro workers or, you know, something like that where I'm getting real traffic onto that to, to make sure that Google sees that as the most important blog post or YouTube sees that as the most important video. Um, you know, because the, the same thing works on YouTube. Um, and that is something I feel that works very well. So click-through rate manipulation is number four. Um, you know what? I'm not sure there are. I mean, there are important factors here, um, you know, making sure your stuff's okay. But what I feel is that people miss out a lot of the basics. People are not using, they're not doing their keyword research properly. They are not tagging up. They're not doing their basic on page properly and they're not doing the bare basics properly in a lot of cases. You know, Google have over 200 ranking factors, apparently. You know, for me, on-page, um, link building, technical, click-through rate manipulation, and I'm trying to think of a good fifth. Um, you know, call to actions on a website are really important as well. You know, having the right user experience, make it simple, easy to navigate, um, and, and for clients to understand because, again, that's all you really need. You only really need those five core basics or four or five of these core basics and you will rank a website reasonably well. Um, now, again, 
as I say, I keep referring to YouTube, but if you go to YouTube just now and you put in a term, something like black hat SEO, I'm able to rank a video overnight for that search term using the same method, click-through rate manipulation. You know, I've got videos uh, on page one and it's very easy to do. It's very easy to do and it shows you how important click-through rate is um, into the mix. And that's something I think a lot of people miss out on is the click-through rate side of things, engagement signals. And use, don't just focus on SEO. Use your organic social media audience. Use whatever else you've got to force that to happen. Just have a process in place and you'll be fine. Okay, a uh, couple of things around the discussion. So one, uh, how we can improve our CT and Google search. Can you share more tips basically uh, that could help us with better CT and Google search? In terms of CTR and Google search, there's, there's different ways you can do it. Now, people for many years have used bots and stuff for that. That stuff doesn't really work as efficiently as getting real people to do it. So I think rather than trying to manipulate it a kind of robotic type of way, you can do it with real people. Now, one little trick that I do is I can send people through a paid Facebook ad, just one trick. Now, I send this paid Facebook ad to the India and Pakistani audience. Now, there's fucking billions of people that stay there. The cost per click is so cheap. It's unreal. And you guys absolutely love digital marketing and videos and, and you know content and all that stuff. So one little trick that I do to get severe engagement is to do a paid, you know, $20, whatever. If I spend $20 and send send that to the Indian audience about technical SEO guide, it's literally going to get thousands of clicks. Now, that is real people with residential IP addresses. They are going to read it. They are going to engage, they are going to engage with it. It's the simplest and easiest trick in the world. You don't have to be um, brains of Britain to understand that a country like India is you know 1.3 billion or, or whatever I can't, I can't remember the exact figures but they are all hungry hungry uh, guys looking for SEO and you know it's a developing country they're all wanting to better themselves and all of the young kids and everything you know they're all wanting to be digital marketers SEOs and make money when they're 12 13 so <coughs> taking advantage of situations that are there such as the cost per click in India is so cheap. Now, that, that you can't beat that stuff. And, you know, people may see, oh, what, you know, why would they do that or whatever? You know, why would I come on this channel and speak to the Indian audience? Um, you know, there's hundreds of people that are going to engage with this video. <laughs> Great exposure again. And I think you have to look to these opportunities with common sense and say, right, there's, there, as I say, there's billions of Indians and it's going to be very low cost, and uh, I can actually have real click-through rate manipulation from these people rather than using some shitty-ass bot um, that, that, you know, maybe doesn't, you know, someone builds a bot and, and you know, and you use a few proxies and stuff. It doesn't really have the same level of engagement. You know, the, the Indian people are commenting on it, saying this, that, and the next thing, and, you know, sending me messages thank you for this guide and you know <coughs> it's real interaction from real people and I think for, for someone like me you know as a, a kind of digital marketing trainer if you like you know I do a lot of tutorials it's the easiest way in the world for me to get click through rate manipulation now that's not going to work you know if you're a gambling guy and you're trying to sell to the UK audience you can't send you know paid ads to India um, because you know that that's not going to work because you know, I think you, with, with the gambling laws and and IP addresses and stuff, you know, India's IPs are probably not, they're probably banned, you know, from uh, gambling sites in the UK um, because I think you have to be in the UK to gamble on certain websites. Um, so that same trick wouldn't apply to every niche. You've just got to think creatively on the cheapest and most cost-effective way to do it. And that's one way that I've personally found that works well for me 
and my industry okay yeah uh, as far as indians i feel uh, we are hungry uh, to learn from experts basically like who are the best guys in the industry so that could be the reason basically uh, you are getting good response from indian people whenever you are doing advertising or uh, whatever you are doing basically on your website or on social handles so that yeah. i just like to add here okay one uh, quick question basically apart from google so which is the best traffic for you which is helping you with business do you know it, it's hard to say which is the best as such um i do reasonably well from youtube i do reasonably reasonably well from facebook i mean i think out of all social media twitter facebook and stuff like that um facebook's the best for me because i've got my own group um and obviously i've got a full uh capacity personal profile um so Facebook does really well for me, but YouTube also, you can drive a hell of a lot of traffic um, through doing video and stuff like that. And I think rather than just simply focusing on SEO all the time, do think like an overall digital marketer. Um, you know, I've also got a big mailing list um, because I've got a big following. Um, so you've got to utilize other non-SEO strategies to drive traffic to your website. Um, build a mailing list use social media properly, work your ass off on YouTube. Um, you know, don't just focus on SEO because I could stop all SEO t tomorrow and still probably have 90% of my traffic um, because of social media, uh, the mailing list and the webinars and all the speaking events that I do. Um, so people are looking for me, like Craig Campbell, SEO or whatever they Google. Um, so people are looking for me rather than, you know, maybe articles that I've written or, you know, do I have to really work that hard to rank them? Probably not because people still find them because they're coming for me, the brand. Um, so, yeah, I think you, I, I, I would like to think that being an SEO, I love SEO and everything else, but I think going forward, you have to think like an overall digital marketer. Use these other platforms to help you grow. Um, and future-proof your website because SEO is becoming more difficult. Do you have to fight as hard as you need to to become the next Neil Patel of blogging? You know, now Neil Patel is rolling out blog after blog after blog after blog after blog. It's impossible to catch him. You know, the guy has so much money, such a big team, and a well-oiled process. The only way you can really beat him is by using your own angle, your own social media, and do something different to Neil Patel rather than try to replicate exactly what he does. Yeah, I think if you were going to just go toe to toe and become the next blogger, um, and you were, <laughs> you know, you're literally going to have to write for the next ten years every day to catch someone like Neil Patel. So, um, you know, very very experienced guy does a great job. And as I say, how do you beat these guys or compete? Just do videos, do more of it, show your personality be helpful, and uh, you can grow as quickly or, 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 you know, quicker than you would maybe do if you were trying to just be this blogger. Okay. Uh, I would just like to add one thing here. Basically, we need to diversify our traffic sources. Like, we should not just focus on SEO. Uh, we should work on other platforms like Quora kind of websites where from where we can get lots of traffic. Then we can be active on YouTube. I think YouTube is a great traffic source. Then be active on some of the social media platforms which work for you. So it's just about yeah. uh, diversifying your traffic sources. Uh, okay, next question. Uh, that's about site audit. You uh, also uh, do, I think, site audit services on your website. So what kind of mistakes you see lots of people uh, making while you're doing site audit for their website? Or it's just about like when you're doing si any website audit. So what kind of common mistakes you see mostly people make? Like, uh, like what kind of on-page level issues or whatever they are making? Yeah, I think... In a lot of cases, again, people are just doing basic, stupid, stupid, stupid mistakes, like having broken links all over their website. So when they take down a blog post or, or you know, whatever, they just leave it and a 404 error comes up. Just do a simple 301 redirect, you know, goodness sake. So, <laughs> you know, that's one I see a lot, you know, just bad, bad, bad housekeeping. Now, when I audit a website, one out of a hundred someone doesn't have uh, a canonical tag on um, or something like that. Now, that's one out of 100. So that's a glaring error. Um, you know, Google's going to see 
your website is two different websites unless you have the uh, canonical on. Um, you know that that things like that happen once in a blue moon. But every time you audit a website, there's broken internal links, there's broken external links. You know because people are just pulling pages down or images down and. They just, they just don't care. You know, general housekeeping is probably the most common thing. You know, for me, I audit my website once a month. Things change in your website. People make mistakes. Do an audit once a month and clean that shit up because there's nothing worse than going to a website, clicking on a link, and, you know, 404, the page you're looking for, is gone. Um, absolutely horrendous. So I don't, you know, when I audit websites, you know, sometimes you see, the, the you know, too much CSS or JavaScript and various things like that as well. You know, that's quite common. But again, these are these are things that you sometimes can't help. You know, if you get a WordPress template or you use certain platforms, you're going to get certain errors. But in terms of uh, basic thing, orphaned pages, so people are not doing internal links properly, you know, there's, there's great content there just sitting as an orphaned page, um, not linked to from anywhere in the website. <laughs> that's quite common um, but again just basic basic stuff that people are not doing properly and people will and this comes from, I, I hear people claiming to be technical SEOs and they can't even do a fucking site audit properly um, you know to do a, a site audit on something like same rush takes you five minutes um, uh, or, or screaming frog or deep crawl or site bulb or whatever the hell you choose to use there's a number of tools out there that will basically tell you what to do and how to fix it. Um, so there is real, no real excuse for a website to be sitting there with hundreds or thousands of this stuff going on. By all accounts, you may have five or six month on month, something you forgot to do. Um, but just do, do a regular site audit and, and clean it up. Um, as I say, developers in the world now are quite good and do have a better understanding of SEO. And most people are using WordPress, so there's no crazy, you know, massive, massive mistakes on websites anymore. It is just all the small little details. And, and I don't know if it comes down to laziness as well. People just can't be bothered with it. They just say, ah, to hell with it. But why go and spend a thousand bucks on links um, when you can go and fix some broken stuff on your website for like, ten dollars worth of time do you know what i mean it's uh make sure that your website is technically sound before you start spending money on advertising or light building or any of that kind of stuff okay uh actually uh, lots of things that comes to seo i think that's about uh, uh with wordpress blogs i think lots of things are automatically fixed because wordpress is already optimized but when it comes to other kind of websites uh, that is custom cms basically uh, in that case, lots of problems happens due to you can say development kind of things, or maybe people are not doing their things at the right way, basically. So it's like people are making mistakes, and SEO guys are trying to help and fix them, basically. So if they were doing their work the good, bad, good way, I would say, then lots of things around SEO may be uh, fixed automatically in that case. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> someone's on a platform like Squarespace or you know some shitty platform like that. I don't even look at it. You know, I'm not prepared to audit a website that I can't fix anyway. You know, if there's server problems, if there's, you know, uh, you know, code problems, you don't have access to to fix that stuff anyway. So, if someone is on a shitty platform, the first thing you would say to them is, you know, get on to Magento if it's a big e-commerce website, or or get on to WordPress if it's a kind of smaller website. You know, there's just no point in fighting with shitty CMSs, you know, there's only so much access you've got and so many things you can actually fix um, on them. So yeah, try and avoid them like the plague. Okay, next question comes from one of the users on our Facebook group. So he's asking, which is the best SEO plugin? Uh, uh, so what uh, is the best plugin, uh, plugin according to you? It depends on what he refers to as an SEO plugin. Now, for me, I'll talk you through the plugins that I use that are really important. Um, I use all-in-one SEO plugin. Um, now, other people will use Rank Math or Yoast. They all do the same thing. Now, the reason that I don't use Yoast is because I've got some borderline OCD, and I hated the traffic light signals on Yoast. 
because if you didn't fill out something 100% how Yoast wanted you to, you wouldn't get a green light. Now, Yoast is not always right. Uh, so because of that, I decided that I'm not going to use Yoast. Um, great tool, does a great job. However, um, I've always found that all-in-one SEO has been good, solid, and reliable for many, many years. I've used it you know, from the mid-2000s. Um, and it's more of a habit than anything. But in terms of other SEO plugins as such, you know, that, that could, what that means could mean anything. You know, you've got image optimization plugins like Smush. You've got WP Fastest Cache, which compresses a lot of JavaScript and a whole lot of other stuff on your website, which also if, uh, indirectly help your SEO. So, that's just a couple of plugins that I have and I would have on every single website that I'm doing SEO on. But yeah, ho I, I, I'm, I'm assuming he's referring to Rank Math, Yoast, or, or you know, all in one SEO. Uh, but they all do the same thing. It's just adding a title tag and a meta description. It's no, doesn't matter whether you use one or the other. Okay. Uh, next question that's about voice search. So the trend for voice search is increasing. So can you share some tips basically that could help us to uh, increase our chances of doing well for uh, voice search based queries? So voice search is not something I really give a thought about at present. Um, the reason for that is because people are always looking for something to talk about. Is voice search that important right now? Now, of course, people are doing voice searches uh, in a small way, but let me ask you, when was the last time you seen someone doing a voice search? Actually, uh, at my end, it used to happen. Basically, you know, lots of people around me, so they can't type. So in that case, they used to speak on mobile or on laptop, basically in their native language, like my wife. So she used to uh, speak in <coughs> Hindi, basically, like uh, if she's making some recipe. So in that case, she uh, will speak something like uh, uh, any specific recipe in Hindi, basically. Yeah, there are a proportion of people that do it. Now, regardless of that voice search, Google is going to throw up results or, or you know, if you do a voice signal, it's going to throw up what's on Google anyway at the top end of it. So if you Google something like, you know, what is the best SEO plugin and you've got Neil Patel, Brian Dean and whatever else, they're not really optimizing for voice search. The, the, the voice search comes from Google. Now, of course, there's certain things you can do to your website to improve its performance for voice search. However, I don't believe that voice search is that big a thing just now. Um, I think in terms of future-proofing your business and your website, you probably want to start implementing some of that stuff over the next few years. But as it stands just now, uh, when you do a voice search command, it's pulling it from Google and you're doing your standard SEO. So your website's going to come up regardless of whether you optimize for voice search or not so that's my take on it do you need to do much just now no do you need to do something else in future of course you will because you know it's going to develop over time and you're going to have to have to optimize your website more and more and more for voice search but as it stands just now doing no voice search optimization on my website doesn't impact any voice searches that, that are going to come through so I see no point in wasting time. It's the same way as, you know, does tagging your images help your SEO? Probably not, really. Um, so is there any point in tagging your images? I don't really spend much time doing it. If I, if I remember to do it, I'll do it. But if something doesn't move the needle that much, I'm not interested in doing it at this stage. Until it becomes a big thing, then I will start taking action on it. Okay, uh, next question is about backlinks, which is really important when it comes about getting rankings on Google search. So what are your top three or five ways basically you are building backlinks uh, for your websites or client websites, which you feel are uh, future professional? So the first thing I'll ever do is buy citations. Um, so I use a service called citationsbuilder.com. Um, He's a fellow Scottish guy, and that's always the core foundation of any website, some citations. From there, I will look to get some easy to get links, you know, niche relevant or uh, geographic, you know, if, uh, uh, geographic links as well. So if, if I'm targeting a local client in London, 
then I'll look to get some good, solid, powerful London links. Um, you know, whether that's in London newspapers or, or something similar or a niche-specific magazine, then I'll look to get those. Then I'll start to build guest blog posts. Um, <coughs> I think guest, po- guest posts are still working really well. But over and above that, it comes down to your level of competition. Now, I think buying a few guest posts, building a few citations, and just grabbing some other handful of other links is normally more than enough to do enough link building for a kind of local company. If you're operating at a national level or you're doing gambling or casino stuff, then you're going to start to have to use PBNs expired domains and do 301 redirects, you're going to have to go into all of the kind of advanced link building tricks and lies and deceit that they go on. So you you would then start to build tier two links and, you know, use automation to point to your guest posts. And, you know, it really, how does link building work? You have to be as aggressive as everyone else in your niche. You have to see what they're doing and replicate it. Now, you cannot enter a niche like the casino niche and not use advanced strategies because you'll never win. Um, but I think in terms of future-proofing your business, do the good stuff first. Get citations, do some outreach, use your contacts, see if you can haggle some links from your friends or whatever. You know, We've all got friends in the industry um, who all do client work. Um, so you might be able to get links from some genuine websites that way exhaust every so-called white hat opportunity you possibly can first and then you might want to you know build a couple of pbns you may want to do a couple of 301 redirects and minimize that risk but as i say um it really comes down to to the industry that you're working in um you just have to go all out and <laughs> you know use pbns and 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 301 redirects if you're in a competitive niche because everyone else is and if you don't follow suit you're not going to rank okay uh, uh next question is again about backlink so uh if we have established websites so we can do lots of things but uh when it comes about new websites how they can build quality backlinks basically because in most of the cases they don't have any connections or they don't have any repo so how they can go about building backlinks so i mean you're probably just going to have to hire a guy that does have connections you know there's there's no way a guy that doesn't have any connections is going to be able to build good backlinks. You know, I think connections and contacts and experience are what make us SEOs. We're not doing anything special. You, you, are, you as an SEO are not doing anything special that, that no other SEO doesn't know. The only thing that will make you stand out from the crowd is your contacts, your experience, and... Uh, you know, your ability to, to decide what's a good link and what's not and things like that. You know, SEO is SEO and a link is a link. Um, you can, you know, as a newbie, you can read up on a course and people will tell you to go and buy guest posts from links for you.com or something like that, um, who are a good guest post um, vendor that's out there, very well known. Um, so you can go and get these opportunities, but you have to watch, learn and develop. Now, as I say, hiring someone like me or you, you're likely to have contacts, PBNs, fucking friends with PBNs, um, and, and God knows what else. And that's what makes you stand out from the crowd because you're holding these assets that no one else can get hold of. So unless they hire you, you're not getting that shit. So as a new person, you you need to become friends with SEO people and um, network. And that's, that's what I would say. Go to conferences, network with guys, buy them a beer, schmooze them, you know, take them out on a date if you have to, whatever, you know, <laughs> it's whatever, whatever works. Um, but as a newbie, you don't realize that that's what you have to do. You know, I've, I've took a guy, a guy right now, I've got a wife, but I've took a guy out on a date, took him out for dinner, bought him some beers just to be able to get some good links. Now, he didn't charge me for the links as such, but I had to to schmooze him up a little bit. I had to, had to. he wanted dinner. He wanted to pick my brain. And I used that as a way to, to get the, the what I needed. So 
you don't always have to pay cash as such. You don't have to pay for the links. You can use your expertise to trade it off or, or whatever. But um, that's the difference between someone starting out. Um, and it was the same for me. It will have been the same for you. You didn't know anyone. You didn't know jack shit. You didn't know where to look for links. You didn't know where the best vendors were. Um, <coughs> and that's what comes with experience. So I would always say, if you're new to SEO, just pay someone for them. Reverse, pay them pay them for the next three months. They might be ripping you fucking off, but find out what the hell they're doing and then you know, come up with a plan from there. So I could come to you and say, build me some links. You know, here's three months budget, build me some links. I'm going to watch what you're doing. I'm going to ask you, how do you build links and all that stuff? Now, you might not tell me, but I would be clever enough to reverse engineer and figure out what the fuck you're doing. So that's sometimes something you have to do. See it as a, a development fee or a training fee. Hire someone and try and grab all that knowledge from them <laughs> as well. You know, you have to pay out. If you're going to sit in your bedroom and you don't want to pay for anything, it's going to take you 10 times longer to figure out what the hell works in SEO. That, that's what I would say. And you are going to fail a lot as well in that case because you'll be making lots of mistakes in that case. If you're doing everything from your end. Yeah, because you've made the mistakes. I've made the mistakes. I, you know, the, the, the benefit of hiring a guy like this is you're not making those same mistakes. You know, I've made five years or six years worth of mistakes before I came good. Um, and I still make mistakes to this day. I, the benefit of hiring me is I can shave that shit off for you. I can save you six years worth of your time. Now, what is six years worth to you? That's the, 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 the big thing. Or, you know, the same with yourself. People don't understand the value of that. And, uh, you know, we've taken a long time to develop and hone, you know, where we buy and, and why we buy things. And we all use different little processes and metrics and, and various different things. You know, you may look at DR, traffic to a website, and, you know, rankings as whether a link's a good link or not. The next guy might just solely base on DR, which is quite easy to manipulate. <laughs> so, you know, I think you have to pay for experience. That's what I would say. Okay. Uh, last question uh, for the day. Uh, it's about YouTube SEO. So you have an active YouTube channel. I think you have more than 20K subscribers on YouTube channel right now. And uh, I would say YouTube search is not that much big. Basically, maybe it could be 20, 30% of your overall traffic. But still, if you want to optimize our videos for SEO, like if you want to get better rankings on YouTube, so what are the top three or top five things we should work on to get better rankings on YouTube search? So the first thing you have to do is optimize the on-page side of things. Use the right titles, the right everything else, the right tags. All of that stuff is really, really fucking important. Now, you can use something like TubeBuddy or uh, VidIQ um, to be able to get those tags and stuff like that. Um, <coughs> that will help you. These things are relatively cheap to use. Now, that's basically your on-page. Now, you can also have a nice intro. You can also have a nice um, exit screen, which puts people onto your next video rather than just going on to some random video. Um, end screen, it's called. That's the right word for it. I couldn't remember it there. Um, you know, in terms of YouTube, having those small things to sort your own page out is important. The biggest thing that works very well is the engagement. So... What makes YouTube think a video, my video is better than yours? Uh, you know, we could both do a video on, you know, some basic SEO topic. What's going to, who's going to win now? We could both use the same tags. We could both use the same everything. It's the engagement that that video gets is what's going to set you apart from the rest. Um, and as I said to you earlier, click-through rate is working very well. When I release a video, it goes out to a group, my mailing list, my push subscribers. I put a paid ad on it to India. I do a whole bunch of different things, which makes that video go viral. Now, there aren't five different things that I do for YouTube um, as such. It is on page and sheer engagement. Now, when I say engagement as well, try and get, encourage people to comment on your video. Um, and also reply back to them. 
because again, that's user engagement. Any video that you see that ranks well for any search term has a whole bunch of engagement, a whole bunch of views, and it's also that time people spend watching your video. You've got to make sure that you're offering good information. Now, if you make a 20 minute interview, you want people to watch that whole 20 minute interview. If people start dropping off after a minute because you bought some bots or some shit like that, your, your rankings are going to drop like a hot stone because YouTube's going to look at that, those metrics, and say, this video must be horse shit. It's 20 minutes long and people are dropping off after a minute. It must be shit. And that's where you're not going to get rankings. So in terms of view time and stuff like that, it's really important alongside the engagement that a video gets. And as I say, YouTube are probably up there in terms of being as clever as Google. They can determine a bot rather than a human being. So try and force human beings to like your videos. You know, by using your organic social media, your mailing list, your push notifications, and anything else you can do to drive real people onto your videos, that is what's important. And uh, it's no different from you interviewing me. Why would you interview me? Um, you've probably seen that I've been on several other Indian shows and people are getting good engagement and you're going, well, I want some of that for my channel. So um, that's exactly why this is this is actual interviews going on because you want to grow your YouTube channel. Who would you rather have? Some random Indian guy that no one watches or me? You know, you want someone that's going to be engaging. You want someone that's going to get... You already know the answer to this question indirectly. And, and now it might not sink in until I say it, but you already know that you want the big name. Now, I want the big name in my channel as well. I want the, you know, Rand Fishkin or, you know, <coughs> Neil Patel or something like that. Someone who brings an audience. I don't want some random fucking dude that has no engagement and talks a lot of shit. So we all already know indirectly that it's the engagement you want, the famous people, the, the ones that are funny or, or whatever it's going to be. Um, and that is what YouTube want is those engagement and those videos watched. And if they see your video being watched to the max and people are commenting on it, then you'll very quickly see that your uh, video ranks very, very well. And you can also make sure you can do other stuff like Im get your videos embedded on web 2.0s and all that kind of stuff, or share it on Reddit, all that kind of stuff all helps as well. But it's all with a view to getting people onto it. Okay. Uh, Craig, how people can connect you? So what is the best way to reach out to you for our audience? Um, so you can go to my website, which is www.craigcampbellseo.com. From there, you'll be able to see all my YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of that stuff. So I'm on most social media channels if you want to connect with me. Um, so you can get a hold of me one way or another on there. Um, Facebook's probably the best, to be honest, but um, I've got the maximum amount of friends on there. So I'm very selective in terms of who... I have to add now, if you don't engage with me, I'll probably delete you very quickly and make room for new friends. But um, yeah, you'll get a hold of me on there. Okay, uh, Craig, thank you so much for giving so much valuable time. And I hope uh, the uh, answers that you gave, so it's going to help lots of audience uh, at our YouTube channel. And again, thank you so much uh, for this wonderful interview. Guys, uh, mm -hmm. in case you like this interview, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll keep coming with more educational videos in the coming days. Thank you so much, Greg. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much.